Hey everybody, welcome to the Head Start Up. On today's video, I want to do my own honest review of the Gyro, one of Europe's most popular trading platforms. So I'm going to go through what I think are most of the pros and cons of the trading platform and at the very end I will give it a rating out of 10. So I plan on reviewing most of the trading platforms available to investors in Europe. So at this stage I have already reviewed Revolut Trading and I will compare the score I gave that to Giro towards the end of the video and I will also leave a link to that review down in the description section if anybody wants to check it out. And if you have any thoughts or comments on the Giro and whatever experiences that you have had with the platform make sure and leave a comment below so, so we can help people out who are making their decision of what trading platform to choose. I want to try and keep this video speedy and not waffle too much, so let's get straight to it. So first off, I'm going to start off talking through some of the pros of the trading platform in my opinion. So when you sign up for a Gyro trading account, you actually have the option of using a web version and you have the option of a app on your phone, which is quite handy and I use both myself. It's handy for constantly checking your portfolio when you have the app on your phone. But whenever I want to look at things in a bit more detail, I like to take out my laptop and use the desktop version. So I can simultaneously have all the other resources that I use open on different tabs and I can do all my analysis basically on one device which is very handy. Here's a quick overview of what the sign up process is like. It's quite straightforward, it's just your usual know your customer details that you have to go through. With. You'd have to supply them with a copy of your passport or your ID also so it's just your usual, it's the same as most of the brokers so there's not much of a difference there really to any other broker. Another positive of the platform is they have loads of different styles of accounts to suit whatever your need is. So they have five different types that you can choose from. They have the basic, the custody, the active, the trader and the day trader. So I'll just give you a little brief overview here of what the difference is between these five different accounts. So this table basically summarizes the difference between the five different accounts and what you have access to and what you don't when you're trading with each account. So it would be good to have a look at this table before you actually sign up so you can decide which account is best suited to you. So the custody account here on the right hand side, you just basically have access to stocks and ETFs. But the more you go up then if you have say the active or the trader account, you get access to to margin and you get access to some of the more risky kind of things that you can invest in such as your options and leveraged type of products. So I'll leave a link to this down below if you want to check this out in your own time. The next positive of the Gyro trading app has to be the variety of financial instruments that you can actually trade on the platform. This for me is definitely the biggest benefit of using the Gyro. So here is a list of the variety of instruments that you can possibly trade. So you have your usual stocks, you have your options, futures, you have commodities, you have ETFs, and you have bonds, you have both corporate bonds and you have both government bonds. So from all the different trading platforms that I've used before, none of them have had as such a comprehensive list of different types of financial instruments that you can use to invest. So if you are somebody who is looking for a bit of variety like that, then the Gyro are definitely worth looking into. There definitely isn't many other brokers offering options trading and investing in bonds in Europe. So it's pretty cool that you can use the trading platform to invest in corporate and government bonds. So they only have a limited few government bonds such as I think the French, the German, the Portuguese and the Dutch uh, government bonds. But I have yet to see any other broker offering this service. So let me know in the comments if you have seen anybody else offering this. It's worth noting that you won't automatically get access to investing in all these complex financial instruments. You'll actually have to take small little multiple choice tests to make sure that you actually understand what you're investing in before you actually are allowed to do it. So they're quite responsible like that. They won't leave you go off and make any really risky investments without being comfortable that you actually fully understand what you're investing in. For me, the next major plus has to be the number of stock markets they actually give you access to. So you have access to, say, markets like the Irish market, where I'm from myself, you have the Australian market, the Japanese. There's a huge list of them. So I think there's over 30 different markets that you have access to. And this is better than a lot of other brokers, some who only limit you to, say, US and UK stocks and only kind of uh, really big European companies. But if you're looking to invest in some of the more niche kind of European companies, then Dejoiro is a good option for you also. My next two positives are actually to do with security. So the first one is because the Gyro are actually a regulated broker. And this is really important because when you're dealing with a regulated broker in Europe, that means you will be part of an investor compensation scheme. So if the Gyro ever go to the wall and go bankrupt, 
your stocks and your investments will be protected up to a value I think of about 20,000 euro. So it's very important no matter what broker you use that is covered by one of these investor protection schemes and luckily enough the gyro is one of those. So the second point there on security is the two-factor authentication also that they offer so you can add this to your account to try and keep your funds safe from potential hacking and stuff like that so that's a really useful thing to have on the app also. Another positive is there's no minimum deposit required at the start. So some brokers like I think eToro um, require you to deposit at least 200 euro at the start. And then there's a stockbroker in Ireland as well, uh, Davy Stockbrokers, you have to lodge I think 500 euro there when you want to start investing. But with the gyro, there's no minimum deposit at the start. So you can start with as little or as much as you want. The next one is a little bit borderline between a positive and negative aspect of the trading platform. So let's say you want to transfer your stock portfolio from a different broker into the gyro, then that is very possible you can do that. But this will actually cost you about 10 euro per stock that you actually transfer into the gyro. So this can get very costly very quick if you're transferring in a portfolio of say 20 stocks, it's gonna cost you about 200 euro to transfer it in. Next up on the list of positives then are the low fees that they offer. So the fees are relatively low compared to most brokers in Europe. So, but let's have a quick look at the fee schedule here and see what you think yourself, if it's too expensive or not. So here is the DeGiro fee schedule, which I'll also link below in the description if you want to take a look at it. So the most important section that we need to look at here is what relates to stocks. So as you can see, it's very cheap if you're planning on buying any stocks on any US exchanges. So it's only 50 cents per transaction and then they have a very minimal fee then per share that you actually buy on top of that as well. But if you're buying from some of the other exchanges, as you can see, it definitely gets a lot more expensive. So it's a uh, two euro there for Ireland, uh, four euro for the UK, and a seven fifty for the Frankfurt stocks. And then, as you can see towards the bottom, it actually gets quite expensive if you're buying stocks from the Australian or the Japanese market, for example. So if you scroll down a little bit further, then you will see the fees for ETFs. So they have a list of fees which you can trade at least once a month, completely free. And I think most of these are the ones that are based in Europe. And for any of the other ones, then it's two euro plus 0 0.03 of a percent. So they are probably the two most important ones to cover. But if you keep going down through the list, you'll see the fees for, say, shorting stocks, for example, for bonds, for investment funds and for options. Another strong positive for me about the Joyro is the level of data that you have access to as an investor. So I've just logged on to the web version here. And this is just a dashboard that you're greeted with as you log in. So you kind of get a nice little summary of how the markets are performing when you log in. So it'll give you all the different indices there and see how they're performing and you see the different winners and losers. And then as you scroll down, you will get kind of the latest news feeds and then all the top stories. And what I really like down at the bottom of the page here are loads of kind of relevant videos that they have kind of embedded on the dashboard here that you can keep up to date for all the latest ongoings in the world that really affect your portfolio. So I've just brought up the Apple stock here so we can get a flavor of kind of the information that they give you on a stock level also. So there's lots of information here so you can do your kind of fundamental analysis of the stock. So as you can see here, they have lots of different pricing data here, like your volume and your, your bid and your ask. And they have lots of information here on these different tabs, like the company profile, the financials, which should give you the company's kind of income statement and its balance sheet and all the ratios are there as well that you need. So it gives you a hell of a lot of information that you can start your analysis from. Another thing I like at the bottom of the overview section here is the analyst views box here. So this is just basically a summary of what loads of analysts actually think about any particular stock that you're looking up. So for Apple, for example, here you can see that they have a current expectation that it is going to outperform the market. So this is going to handy to get a good indication of what other investors are actually thinking at the moment about this stock. So no trading platform is perfect. There's always going to be negative aspects that we need to talk about. So now I'm going to go through some of these negative aspects that I think that they need to improve on. First up, it has to be how slow it is to actually lodge money into your trading account. So every time you want to lodge money onto your DeGiro trading account, you need to manually transfer it from your bank. And this can take about two or three days depending on whatever bank that you use. So this can be quite annoying if you're trying to act on some information very fast. It's a pity they don't allow you to make credit card deposits like some of the other brokerages like uh, Trading212, which you can instantly 
uh, load money to your account. So this is something I hope that they change sometime in the future. The next negative on the list for me has to be the trading app. So I'm just gonna bring it up on my phone here. And I think the user experience on it is not very good at all. So it's quite hard to navigate your way around the app and it's not very easy in the UI. Maybe this is just me, but I hope they come up with a better version of it in the future. It's probably not their priority at the moment, but I think it would make it a much more popular app if the user experience was just even improved just a little bit because it's quite kind of basic and kind of ugly looking. <laughs> So next up on the negative list are just a few things that are actually just missing from the platform. So you can't actually trade any CFDs or any FX or any cryptocurrencies, for example, on the trading platform. So they do have a, quite a big list of things that you can trade, but these are just a few of the things that you actually can trade on the platform. Another negative about the platform, I think, is they don't have any demo account. So a demo account basically is when they give you a bit of fake cash to go and trade and get you to understand all the different kind of complex financial instruments and get to learn about different things and get more confidence before you actually go investing with your real money. So some other brokers have these and I think they're really brilliant for anybody who's starting out and want to try and learn before they go risking their own money. The next disadvantage is whenever you choose what account you wanna set up at the start, so whether it's the basic, the custody or the, the trader for example, if you want to change from one to the other in the future, you'll actually have to pay to do that. So for me, that's a bit of a needless fee that they charge people from moving between the different types of accounts, which is a bit unfair, I think, on customers. So next up on the list is their customer service. So I've only based on this on my own experience. So I've reached out to them a couple of times and each time it's taken well over a week to get a response to any of my queries. So this is quite slow if you're trying to resolve any big issues with your account. So I think this is something that they should really improve. A lot of other brokers have live chats where you can resolve your issues very quickly. The next issue for me also is they don't offer fractional shares. So if you are somebody who is investing with a modest amount of money, you can't really invest in companies like Amazon who have a huge share price. Compared to other brokers who do offer fractional shares, you can buy little small portions of a share of say Amazon. But on the Giro, you don't have this option. You can either just buy one share, two shares, three shares, Whereas on other brokers, sometimes you can buy, say, 0.2 of a share, 0.5 of a share. So that definitely is a disadvantage for anybody who is only starting investing. So they are all my pros and cons of using their platform. I give it about an 8.5 out of 10 as a score. This is compared to the score that I gave Revolut of about 7. So I think the Giro has the potential to be rated a lot higher if it just fixed a couple of those small little problems like how long it actually takes to lodge your money, the fractional shares issue, and just a bit more of an improvement on the overall user experience, then it definitely would be a much better trading platform to use. However, if you're the type of investor who just wants to put a portion of your wages every month into an ETF, then I think the Giro is perfect for you. So that's it for the video today. Thanks very much for watching. And if you like this content, make sure to sub to my channel, like the video for more content like this in the future.